or he's gone. I read this story years ago about a gentleman by the name of Johnny Appleseed. Wasn't really his name, but that was what he became known as. Everywhere he went, he just planted seeds. Long story short, he did that because he saw places that didn't have anything. And he knew that if an apple tree was there, if you were hungry, there would always be apples there. Everywhere he went, he just planted apple seeds. I forget it was a huge number. Over the course of his life, there was over 40 different states. 40 different states that he planted. And he planted, and many of those trees are still there today. Because what he realized in his life, that people would get tired and they would get hungry. And he said, wherever I go, I'm going to plant seeds. I'm going to leave seeds there so a tree can come. So that when they're tired and they're hungry and they don't have anything, that there'll be something there. Can we just be like a Johnny Appleseed? Wherever I go, I know people are tired and they're hungry. Lord, just let my spirit come and just, and just let, let me lead people better than I found them. Hmm. Let me pray over a place. I'm not even preaching yet, so, so don't be timing me. Praise God. The scripture, said, the scripture said that when Jesus released his disciples, watch this, he sent them out and he said, when you come into a town, when you come into a house, pray and let your peace come over. Did he not? Did he not? He said, let your peace come over. Mm. Praise God. God, I want to walk into this place today. Let the Spirit of God go before me. Let the, let the first person that I meet touch their heart and bless them, Father. They don't, and, and, and you say, well, well, they won't know it was me. It's not about you anyway. It's about his spirit. It's about his presence. Hallelujah. We're interchangeable. He is not. Mm, praise God. If you have your Bibles with me, show them to me. I just like seeing those Bibles. Praise God. There you go. Paper or electronics, good with me. We're going to the first chapter of the book of James. <clears throat> Praise God. You ever, you ever felt like that you just don't feel this presence of God like you once did? You ever feel like sometimes, you, you know, you're going through the motions and you're doing everything that you can, but you just don't feel the presence like you once did? Hallelujah. We had a, uh, when I was a youth pastor, we had an old bus. I mean a real old bus. And so we had a gentleman, he put an air conditioner on the bus. Whew. Praise God for that air conditioner. It had, a, it had a small line to it. And it never worked the whole trip. We'd go down there cool, we'd come back hot. And I said, what's going on? And he said, well, he said, uh, oh, he get, he, I won't go into all the technical things. But there was a real small line. And these small pieces of particle would get hung up in that line. And so my thought, well, get a bigger line. Praise God. And I think sometimes, sometimes we get small particles in our line that's coming from God to us. And those small particles, they end up keeping us from receiving all that God would have for us. Praise God. We see how that Jesus... When he was a young man, the scripture tells us in Luke 2 and 52 that, that everywhere that Jesus went, that, that, that he continued to increase in, in, in wisdom. He, and he got bigger physically. The scripture, King James says, he increased in stature. But everywhere he walked around, he, people liked him. They liked him. But, but can I tell you, all that changed when the Spirit of God came on him. Mm. He, was, he was about the age of 30. When the Holy Ghost came upon Jesus. And then once the Holy Spirit comes upon him, we see how, how that, that the Spirit of God, uh, uh, one, one passage says in John, it says that he drove him into the wilderness. What he did, he, the, the Spirit of God forcibly pushed Jesus into the wilderness for one reason, to be tempted of the devil. Okay, And I want to tell you that God cannot use us until we face our temptation and we've overcome it. Come on, church. See, the sooner that we get victory over our flesh, the sooner that we can move into the things of God. And you, God is a spirit, John 4 tells us. 
incense. God is a spirit. God wants us to worship him in a spirit way. But until we have a free flow for the spirit of God to move upon us, we're constantly frustrated. Now watch. In James chapter 1, I'm going to go backwards with the scriptures, but in verse 14, it says that every man is tempted. Ladies, you're tempted also. Every individual is tempted. Now watch this. It teaches us that Satan tempts us by, by doing this. He draws us away. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. And then he's enticed. I want you to know that what it's saying here is that every individual is going to face a temptation. And Satan is going to take something that you like to do. He always, you know, I, I say all the time, Satan is never going to tempt me with broccoli. Praise God. Broccoli just doesn't tempt me. Praise God. He can throw all the broccoli in front of me. It's just not going to tempt me. Praise God. There's other things that can tempt me. So, so watch this. Satan attempts to draw you away by the things that you have a natural liking for. And he entices you with them. Now watch. Verse 15 tells us that when that lust conceives in us or that desire conceives in us, okay, that it will bring forth sin in our life. Can I tell you, many times Satan will begin to tempt us not with things that are necessarily wrong, but he will begin to, he will begin to tempt us with things that we like. And he will take those things because the scripture says that God gave us all things richly to enjoy. God has given us many, many blessings. But watch this. The, the, the scripture says that, that every man or every woman, every child, every individual is tempted when they're drawn away of their own lust. Things that they enjoy. Things that they desire. Okay? And then, and then Satan will take those things and he will cause them to have too great of an input in your life. Can I tell you, everything, everything has its balance. Somebody say amen. Can I tell you something? How many men here like a good steak? Oh, we got some vegetarians and vegans here. Praise God. Huh. I like a good steak, but can I tell you, if I eat steak every day, you're going to get a little problem in your foot. You're going to get, you, you know, your cholesterol level is going to go up. So, so there's a balance. I like blue. How many people like bluebell? Well, some of y'all aren't even Americans. Praise God. If you don't like bluebell, I'm telling you, I don't think you can go to heaven. <laughs> Praise God. But can I tell you, you eat too much bluebell, it causes some side effects also. I'll leave those alone. Praise God. Mm. It affects different people in different ways. But watch this. It, 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 he, he says... He says, every man is tempted when they're drawn away of their own desires and then they're enticed. Satan will take things. They can be bad things or they can just be things and he can give and, and he, he will try to, to, to get you so infatuated with that that it begins to overwhelm and take over uh, your life and, and have too big a part in your life. Now listen, and so, and so verse 15 says that, that when that, he, he'll take that lust, he'll take that desire and when it has too big a, a hold upon your life, it will bring forth sin. It will cause you to sin. Hello. I don't think I'm getting through to anybody here yet. Praise God. I'll never forget. I had a, had a friend of mine. And man, the, out there on, on the Caddo River, they, they had probably what would be a half a million, three quarter of a million dollar lake home. I'm telling you, whew, it was sharp. It was built up because the river would flood sometimes and he had all his boats up on these winches and he had a, he had a dumb waiter that'd go up and down and carry stuff upstairs. I want to tell you, it, it was a sharp place. It, it was beautiful. Can I tell you something? God blessed them with that. But he come to me and he said, he said, he said, this is a blessing from God, but I know that if I allow it to pull me out of the house of God, that, that it's not good for me. Come on, church. I want us to understand that it's not always bad things, but, 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 but any time that we put things ahead of God, it becomes a block to, to the presence of God in our life. 
Are you with me? Praise God. He says, he says it brings forth lust. And then that lust, that desire for that thing that we have, it causes us to sin. And the, and, and the reason that Satan does that, he said, when sin is finished with us, it causes death. Now, it causes a physical and it causes a spiritual death. Praise God, because when it takes so much of our time, so much of our energy, and so much of, of, of our mental thinking, we, we begin to, to spend less and less time with the Lord, and all of a sudden we get cold, and it doesn't matter if we're not doing and, and we're not giving to God what we once gave to Him. We still feel okay. But Satan wants to take the, these things that we already have a liking for, we already have a desire for, praise God, and it brings forth sin in our life because the ultimate goal for Satan is to destroy us. Praise God. You see, what it's teaching us is that Satan searches till he finds these hidden things in our life and he begins working to entice you Praise God, because he wants to destroy you. But now watch, now watch. I go to verse 12. Look at verse 12. But he says, blessed is the man, blessed is the woman, blessed is the individual that endures temptation. Listen to me. God says that you're going to be tempted. Satan is going to try to find things that you naturally like. He's not going to come at you with broccoli. Yeah. Praise God. He's not going to come at you with, with, with things you don't like. But, but listen to me. The scripture says, blessed is the man that endures temptations. In other words, blessed is the individual that does not give in to those temptations. Praise God. He said, he said for when he is tried, he, he, he says, you're going to be tried. You're going to be tested with it. When you are tried, you shall receive the crown of life which God has promised to them that love him. Praise God. So here, here God's word declares that you and I must endure. We must resist and not give in to it. Can I tell you that, that the blessing comes many times after we win the victory. Man, I, I, can, I can tell you about times I've been tested, I've been tempted, and I've gone through some things. Listen to me. So, uh, Merle, so, sometimes I felt like God was 200 miles away during that time. I prayed, and I, I'll be honest, I didn't hear a, a voice from God. I didn't hear a word from God. There was times I didn't feel comforted. Praise God. And there were some times I felt like I was all alone. And then you get to thinking, man, is, where is God at? Why doesn't he help me through this? Praise God. But, but you see, God wants you to endure. God wants you to, listen, you know it's right. So even if nobody else reaffirms, you do the right thing. And, and I've always found out that after, after I've done the right thing, praise God, then the presence of God begins to flow again. Praise God. I remember Abraham, he walked up into a mountain with his son and, and we know how that he was supposed to he thought he was going to sacrifice his son but, but God put him through that very test and, and when, he, when he passed that test, if, if you look the scriptures, scripture said God said now I know. Now I know I can trust you. Now I know that you'll be faithful. Praise God. I want to tell you something. We don't go from to the sixth grade until we pass the fifth grade. Praise God. Why'd you pick that out? I spent nine years in the fifth grade. No, I didn't, but it sure seemed like nine. Praise God. See, God expects us, listen, not to deal with these issues, but to overcome these issues. And he says that we must overcome these issues. Praise God. You see, some people are just happy just to deal with the issues. And the same thing that God tempted them with at 14, they're still dealing at 44 with. But listen to me, it never was God's design for it to be a 30-year test. God just wants you just to deal with it, acknowledge Him, move forward, lay it down and walk away from it. Come on, church. Praise God. Hallelujah. Can I tell you that, that my first big test that he gave me, it, it wasn't about sin, it wasn't about anything else, but listen to me, it was about some priorities I had in my life. I'm going to leave that one alone too. Turn with me to Jeremiah. Watch what Jeremiah says in, in chapter 17. Praise God. In Jeremiah chapter 17, in verse 7, it says, Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord. Blessed is the lady that trusts in the Lord. Blessed is a young person that trusts in the Lord. Why? Whose hope, 
The Lord is. Praise God. I'm just going to trust you. Watch this. Because that individual, verse 8 says, shall be like a tree that is planted by the waters and that they shall spread out their roots by the river and they shall not see when the heat comes but her leaf shall be green and she shall not be careful in the year of drought and neither shall she cease from yielding fruit. Now watch. But, but watch verse 9. He says, but the heart is deceitful above all things. And the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Mm. Can, I, can I tell you, there's a lot of people that are walking around, they're saying the right things, they're acting the right way, but their mind is still a sewer. We know how to act at church, some of us. We know how to act around people, but in our mind... We have not yet harnessed our mind. And we wonder why that we're not experienced the presence of God like we should. Watch this. He says the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. It's desperately wicked. Who can know it? But watch. Then God says, but I, the Lord, I search your heart. Then I try your reins. Even to give every man according to his ways and according to his doings. Come on, church. I want to talk to you about this battle that is going on in so many people's mind. We've got to determine that we're not going to play with it anymore. We've got to determine that we're not going to entertain it anymore. Come on, church. Because, listen, you can continue to do the right thing, but inside your mind, you're playing games that aren't the right way. Come on, church. God sees that. He, try, he knows what's in our heart. I want you to know, if it, it, it may not come out of your mouth. Satan doesn't know it if it doesn't come out of your mouth. But I want to tell you something. God knows what's in our heart. God knows how we're thinking about things. I read a story in the sixth chapter of the book of Mark. It uh, starts about the 20th verse. And it said that, 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 that King Herod, he had respect for John Baptist. He really liked old John Baptist. He, he knew that John Baptist, verse 20 says, he knew that he was a just man. He knew that he was a holy man. And, and, and so Herod observed him. Herod liked his ministry. Herod followed his ministry. Herod enjoyed his preaching. He did un until John Baptist got on his toes. It's ironic how that, how that we'll amen things as long as they don't come near our household. But when they come near our household, we put up a wall. Listen to me. I, I, this, is, this is hot off the wire, Brother Mard say. I'm just going to tell you. So many times we will continue to move from church to church to denomination to denomination to group to group until we can find somebody that agrees with us. I want to tell you something. That's the greatest weakness in the church today. You shouldn't be jumping around trying to find a church that agrees with you. You just need to find a church that preaches and believes the word of the almighty God. You need to get into it and you don't need to. to mm. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, brother, how we don't need to say this. It'll offend them and, and they'll run off. Listen to me. God's not going to change and God's not going to hide his ways, his laws, and his values. Come on, church. Praise God. If we can't teach the truth, the truth won't be taught. Mm. All right, let me get off the wire. So he, he liked old John Baptist. He moved in. He was living with his brother's wife. John Baptist preached on it. He threw him in prison. Still liked him. He just said, I'll just shut him up for a while, let him out. But he had a birthday party. He wasn't thinking about this holy man. But Herod's girlfriend, living girlfriend, she, she was frustrated because she was afraid that Herod may just begin to listen to John and he'd get rid of her. So a birthday party. So... She had a, a good-looking young girl, daughter. And she said, hey, I want you to put on some skimpy clothes. I want you to go out there and I want you to do the wild dance. And then I know Herod, he's going to want to bless you. And this is what you're going to do. 
You're going you're gonna to ask for the head of John the Baptist on the charger. I mean, she, well, I'm not even going to show you how she did. I got a tie on right now. I just can't. I, start, I felt my hips starting to move, though. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> but she danced such a dance. John Baptist hormones got to racing. The scripture, the scripture teaches us, I believe it's about verse 20, 26, yeah, that when, when it was over, he said, I'll give you anything. I'll give you up to half the kingdom. That was a good dance. He knew he had to take care of her because he wanted to see that dance again. His hormones got the best of him. Hello. And when she asked for the head of John the Baptist, the scripture in verse 26, put that up, look at there. The king was exceeding sorry. He didn't want to kill John Baptist. He liked John Baptist. He knew he was a godly man. But his hormones are racing. He'd, he'd given the girl an oath, and his pride was in front of him. All the people knew. Listen to me. So he took his life. Listen, every one of us here, I don't care how good you are, how holy you are, put in the wrong, or we'll say put in the right situation, your hormones can get to racing. And when they get to racing, things that you wouldn't normally do, you begin to do. Come on, church. You see, I want to tell you this. And you think, well, it's just nobody sees this. God sees. He doesn't sleep and he doesn't slumber because he knows that, that in today's society that after the wife goes to bed, that sin to the max, I think it's what it's called, the computer gets clicked on. The cell phone that has these vivid pictures. We began just to quickly visit those sites because the hormones are racing and nobody knows and you can control it. Come on, church. You see, but I want to tell you something. James tells us, Brent, that Satan is looking and he's probing us. He's probing our life. And if he can find a weakness there, he wants to get you consumed with it. And it's sin. And that sin, Satan's desire and design is that when he's through with you, it'll bring forth death. Sp spiritual as well as physical death. Can I tell you that, that you can, you say, well, I can control it. You don't understand my situation. The word says you were bought with a price. That you're to glorify God with your body and your spirit, which are God's. You say, well, I can control it. Listen to me. It's like a little small virus. You'll begin to look at it. But watch this. Your eyes are a portal to your soul. And you control it because, see, I'm an adult. Watch that movie, and it just had that, it was a great movie. It just had that one scene. Hello. But you see, Satan knows this that once it goes through one of those portals, your ears or your eyes, that it will sit there like a virus. And a small virus doesn't bother you the first day, but it's growing silently in there. It's there to defile you. And every time that you get ready to really worship God or read the word, it seems like that, you know, it, nobody really knows but me. So I got this hit. I got, it, I got it controlled. But every time I go to read the word, it seems like I hit one of those verses that brings it back to me. Why? Because, because Hebrews tells us in chapter 4 and verse 12 that the word of God is alive. And it's, it's, like a, it's like an antibody. It's going through our life also, and it spreads. Come on, church. Listen to me. There was a, there was a Old Testament story, and a, a man named Potiphar, he, 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 bought him, he bought him a slave by the name of Joseph. And Potiphar was of one age, and his wife was a little bit younger than him. And Potiphar's wife was unhappy in her marriage. 
And she didn't love Joseph, but she had a physical desire for him. Hello. Now watch this. That desire for him, every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust. Every man likes attention. Every female likes attention. You would never step out in your marriage, but your husband has quit giving you attention. He doesn't tell you that your hair is beautiful, that you look good, that he likes those shoes. And you go to work and somebody comments on your hair. You would never step out. You're too good a godly person. But over a period of time, you find yourself fixing your hair that way, not because it makes your husband proud, but you just want someone to notice you. Every man is tempted when they're drawn away of their own lust, their own desires. Hello. Now, Potiphar's wife didn't love him, didn't love Joseph, but she had a physical desire for him that she felt like was not being met inside of her marriage. And it, and it was so strong, she continued to go after Joseph. But watch this. Sin, Satan brings temptations into our life to ensnare us. He doesn't come with a chopping axe. He comes with something that is going to ensnare us. And it gets deeper and deeper. Well, Potiphar's wife got frustrated with the, with the amount of times that Joseph said no. But watch this. Joseph fell in. The only fault I can find with Joseph was he knew this woman wanted him. But he knew that it was all part of his job. Hello? But in, but in Potiphar's wife's mind, she's saying, if I can't have him, nobody else can either. He comes in and she entices him and he says no. Because, see, Joseph was strong enough. I can handle it. But I don't want to make any waves. I don't want to say anything because it'll mess my job up. It'll cause me some problems. She grabbed him. You know the story. Then she, because she couldn't have him, she decided nobody would have him. And she got him thrown in prison. You see, we live in a visual world. Get a hold of this. The eyes are the portal to the soul. The mind is the entrance to the soul. You cannot look at everything that's out there and still maintain your spiritual nature. Come on. You can fake it. Listen to me. Your anointing will not stay when your flesh is being fed more than your spirit. Can I tell you one scene that you allow yourself can stay in your mind and years later can continue to pop up and to cause you different problems. Come on, church. Can I tell you, Joseph didn't want her, but sin wanted him. If you allow inappropriate things to hang around you, eventually they will ensnare you. And it will ruin your reputation. Now watch, when it all came out, and she said, Potiphar, he tried, to, he tried to do things to me. Here's his jacket. I grabbed him and I screamed and he left his jacket. Now watch, Joseph tried to explain it to himself. Get this, this is, this is so important. Joseph tried to explain himself to Potiphar. I didn't do that. Your wife did this. She's been trying this over and over and over. And Potiphar's first thought was, if that's true, why haven't you told me? Listen to me. When you reject someone's inappropriate advances, but then you decide to keep it quiet, listen to me, in a twisted way, that person that is making those advances, they secretly think that you're enjoying it. And so now when he brings up, I didn't do that, Potiphar's wondering, 
If it was true, why haven't you already said something to me? Come on, church. You see, we live in a... And I'm, I'm, I'll am i apologize right now. I don't mean to be... But I do mean to preach what I feel God's led to me to. We live in a society where pornography is so very, very accessible. We live in a society where suggestive clothing is the style. And style means a lot to us. We live in a society where vulgar language is now accepted in our music. Come on, church. And yet the God that we serve, who does not change, still requires holiness in our life. Modesty in our dress and sexual purity in our life. Can I tell you? I'll, I'll say this to the young people. I'll say it as nice as I can. God still believes and expects, and inside the church, the true believers, they still believe that virginity is something to be held on until, until marriage. And that abstinence is still expected in the Christian life. Listen to me as I get ready to tie this up. Our ears and our eyes are two major entrances to our souls. I want to show you something. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 24 and 25. Put that up, please. Watch this. Proverbs says, make no friendship with an angriest man. So don't be friends with somebody who's always mad. And with a furious man, don't go places with him. Why? Because you're liable to learn his ways and it will become a snare to your soul. Now watch. So scripture, what it's telling us is that what you see and the type of talk that you allow yourself to be around either raises or lowers the values that you live. Listen to me. For the child of God, there's still places that we don't go because we know that it, it's an atmosphere that we don't need to handle. Wow. You see, sc- Scripture teaches us that our life is a trichotomy. We are a three-part being. We are spirit, we are soul, and we are body. And every, time, and every time that somebody talks about that, they always go spirit, soul, and body. They never go body, soul, spirit. Okay, it's always, okay well, listen to me. Now, now, Galatians chapter 5 and verse 17, it tells us that our flesh and our spirit are always in constant battle with each other. And it hinders us from doing and being all that God's called us to be. Okay? Now, now, now the verse before that... In Galatians 5 and 16, it teaches us that if we have a consistent spirit-led life, that that is the only way to remain victorious over fleshly desires. Now then, if you read on down in Galatians, and I won't take that time, it lists many of, of those fleshly desires. Then it begins to list a lot of those spiritual desires. But now watch. We're trichotomy. We're spirit. We're body in the middle of soul. The soul is the mind. It's our will. And it's our emotions. Wow. It's our mind. It's our will and our emotions. It is like a filter. It filters between our flesh and our spirit. So that's why the scripture says that we are to guard the things that we see and guard the things that we hear. That's why the scripture says from the abundance of the... And it's not a heart. That heart's an organ. It's pumping blood. But metaphorically speaking, when he says, he said, he said from the abundance of the heart, of our mind, of our souls, what he's really meaning, the mouth speaks. When we speak negative, it's because there's negative in there. When we, when we speak sexual, 
because sexual's in there. When we speak inappropriate, it's because it's in there. Why? Because, listen, what you put in to your mind, to your soul, is what comes out. Come on, church. Praise God. Listen to me. Most people today, though, they really don't read their Bible much. And I hear all the time, well, brother, I don't understand it. Yet, we have our gadgets that when we got, we didn't understand them either. You find a 12-year-old to teach you. And then that 12-year-old teaches you. But listen, it's, it's important to us. But watch. Listen, most, most people today, they don't read their Bible. They seldom set aside time in their day for prayer. Hello? Hello? And we're afraid to verbally and openly share godly values. Instead, we watch hours of television. It may have bad language. It may have questionable content. But it entertains us. It comes through those portals into our soul. We spend hours and hours of playing Ro- these role-playing video games. Hello. Well, Brother How it's just a game. It has no effect on us. What you're putting into yourself is what's coming out of yourself. Come on, church. I- I'm just, listen to me. And we spend hours and hours on Facebook trolling other people's values. And then we wonder why that we're depressed. Why we're not satisfied with our life. And why we cannot hear God. Listen to me. Today the church people know more what other people are saying. Than what the spirit of God is saying to them. Come on church. Listen to me. It's time that you and I clean our filter. It's time that you and I lay aside. The word says lay aside every weight. And every sin. Some things are sin and we got to get them out of our life. They're hidden in our life. Other things are just slowing us down. He said lay aside every weight and lay aside every sin that does so easily beset us. And let us run this race with patience. Looking forward to... Wow. Listen church. Jeremiah 29, 13 says it like this. And I'll get ready to close. Holly, you can come. He says it like this. He says, and you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. Wow. You see, I found that I put it into a way we can understand on your computer on your phone you get up in the morning and you get to looking how did they get my address delete how did this ad come on on my phone delete you know why you delete them or should it slows your phone down it runs sluggish Some of these ads, if you leave them on, they got a virus attached to them. Hello? And you know you've got to delete them and you've got to get them out so that your phone will optimally run again. So your computer can run again. God wants us to begin to delete these things out of our life. These things that are hindering us. He wants us to begin to control what our eyes are seeing. He wants us to begin to control the, the, the things that we are hearing. Why? So that we can optimally receive him. I want you to stand with me. Listen to me. When God comes back, every man, every woman, and every child is going to stand before him. Nobody's going to be around you. <coughs> and we're going to be judged by the almighty God. He says the way to heaven 
He said that gate is straight and it's, that gate is narrow. And he says, few are finding it. Listen to me. How long has it been since you really felt the presence of God? Can I tell you the joy that God wants to give you? It's not a joy that lasts for 15 minutes and then leaves. It's just a joy for life. It's just a joy that just, that just every day makes us get up and want to embrace and expect the presence of God today. I try to be real slow. I try to be a little thorough. But I can sense a tenseness in this room. I'm going to tell you when Jesus comes back, those hidden things that have, begun, that have dominated our life, and some of them initially aren't bad, but they're now controlling your life. They're, they're in your thought life, and they're defiling you. And can I tell you, the scripture says that when you're tempted, when you overcome that temptation, when you get that out of your life, he said, then you'll receive the crown of life. This morning, this morning is the time to lay those things down. This morning is a time to say, Father, I want to be yours again. This morning is a time when I say, Father, I'm better than that. You've created me to be better than that. You've created me to be righteous. You've created me to be holy. And you've created me to have intimate fellowship with you. This morning as we open these altars, it's not for someone to lay hands on you, but it's for you to come down and encounter the Almighty God, the God that, that originally cleansed you, that originally set you free. And these things that we've all cluttered up, today's the day to lay them at His feet. Would you come? Will you just come? Praise God. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather have Jesus than riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. Praise God. Jesus. Come on. Come on. I just want to lay them down at your feet, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Come on, church. Lay them down. Maybe you're here and you say, you know, I just want to, I just want to have God just try my heart. See if there's any wicked way in me. See if there's anything I need to. I just want to come to the altar. Come on. Come on.